It's summertime and the farmer's market season is in full swing. So today we're gonna make this, a Kansas City style barbecue sauce by way of West Virginia. So today's whole recipe was spurred on by the fact a coworker of mine from Hacker Valley, West Virginia, brought in some homemade molasses from some sugar cane they grew back home. I know, I didn't even know you could grow sugar cane in West Virginia. That prompted me to hit the farmer's market, grab as many locally sourced ingredients as I could, and create a Kansas City by way of West Virginia barbecue sauce. So let's get started. Now as we get started, I'm gonna tell you that the base for this recipe comes from amazing ribs and meathead. Most of this is gonna be meathead standard Kansas City barbecue sauce. With some West Virginia flair thrown at the end, and we're gonna start off with a quarter of a medium sized white onion. Try to dice it as fine as you can and about four cloves of garlic. These as well, you wanna chop pretty fine. At the end of this, I'm probably gonna strain this barbecue sauce. It's something I normally do with a lot of my barbecue sauces. But if you don't want to, I'd recommend going as small as possible or plan to hit it with a blender at the end. Once we get that done, we're gonna use our char griller flat iron griddle and put a big pan on it, hit it with a little bit of oil and get that garlic and onion sauteing up. We wanna get it to sort of soften up just a little bit, get translucent, start to get very aromatic. So when I went to the farmer's market, what I found that I wanted to use were peaches and serrano peppers. I thought about doing jalapenos, everybody does jalapenos. Let's do serrano chilies. If you don't know, they're very similar to a jalapeno as far as heat, they may be a little bit hotter. You always have some variants, especially with locally grown stuff, but a serrano is a really great little chili. Basically, all I'm gonna do is have these peaches and remove the pit and cut these serranos and remove the seeds and veins. Now it's also worth noting here that I let this fruit and these peppers get very ripe. If you don't know, fruit's always the sweetest right before it goes bad. So don't let it go bad, but let it get nice and ripe. Back over to our pan, after our onions have got translucent, the smell is fantastic coming off of this, we're gonna toss in our dry ingredients and let them toast up a little bit. Now the full recipe for this sauce is down in the description below but generally you've just got your normal chili pepper, paprika, salt, pepper, those kinds of things. We didn't need to add garlic because we've got garlic in here. We don't need to give these a lot of time, but we want to let them toast and open up a little bit. Next, we're going to add the majority of our wet ingredients, which are going to be things like ketchup, yellow mustard, Worcestershire sauce, Worcestershire sauce, Worcester, apple cider vinegar, we're gonna add one cup of brown sugar because it's not Kansas City barbecue if you don't have that brown sugar. We're gonna add some maple syrup for sweetness. Everybody wants to talk about Texas best kept secret. Barbecue's best kept secret is maple syrup. Okay, there, I said, I said it, I said it. That's a joke, it's the worst kept secret. Everybody knows to use maple syrup. And this is where a little bit more of the West Virginia flair comes in. First, this is locally sourced honey, not only locally sourced, but it's from my dad's farm. And we're gonna add about a quarter cup of that honey. And lastly, we're gonna come in with about a half a cup's worth of this Hacker Valley molasses. Again, sugar cane in West Virginia, I had no idea. Once we give that a quick stir, we're gonna throw our chilies that we've cut up into some big pieces into the sauce. Now we cut them up like that so they'd be really easy to retrieve at the end. Even though we're gonna strain it, I just want it to be extra easy to get those out. And I wondered what the best way to infuse these peaches into the sauce was. Should I juice them in my juicer? And I thought not everybody has a juicer. So you know what, we're just gonna squeeze it. I'm gonna try to get most of the skin out, but I'm also not worried about it because I'm gonna strain this at the end. So squeeze them in there. And as you're stirring, just try to break down that peach. It's gonna sweat down and break down and get as much of that sweet peach goodness in there as you can. Now here's the super boring, but super important part. We're gonna keep this on a low heat, basically simmering and stirring and just letting all these flavors incorporate for about a half an hour. After about a half an hour though, it looks like this and we're ready to strain this and get it into a jar. So you don't want a super fine strainer when it comes to this. Strainers are really cheap. Unfortunately, I couldn't find mine. So next best thing is a pretty small colander. Works just the same. And all we're gonna do is put this colander on top of a bowl and slowly pour our sauce in, take a rubber spatula and just move the solids away from the hole so that the sauce can drift through. Keep doing this until it's all through. Then I recommend a bowl with a spout so we can pour it right into our mason jar. Now I'm gonna let this cool on the counter, put the lid on it and put it in the refrigerator because I assure you that right now if you taste it, you might wanna make some adjustments. And if you do, go ahead and do that. But it's gonna taste way different tomorrow. And now that it's tomorrow, 
it's time to get the true taste test. So we've got our Kansas City by way of West Virginia barbecue sauce, little finger test here. It's a good thickness. That's solid. Now the better test would have been actually cook up some pork butts or something to really test on, but just out of the jar cold, I like it. And also cold to hot, you'll pick up some different notes. So right now, this is a very savory sauce. For as much sweet as in there, it's very balanced. There's a lot of savory notes. The garlic really comes through on me on this one, which I really like. That Serrano chili heat is very subdued, but it's on the back of your throat where it would be. I didn't want to burn anybody down. If you did, you could add more, but two Serranos for me made that about perfect. And the peach is nice and subtle. If you know it's in there, you can pick it out. But if you don't know it's in there, it's not going to be something that really bothers you if you don't like peaches. Because for some reason, there are people that don't like peach flavor. I don't know why. Now, if you don't like peaches and serrano peppers, you can swap those out for any fruit and pepper combination. But fruit plus a hot pepper, you want to go apples and habaneros. If you want to go berries and chipotle, I don't know. Whatever you want to do, but you can definitely do it. It's just a sweet and heat. I mean, that's literally barbecue, sweet heat. So now that we got the sauce, we've got to hit our secret weapon pulled pork to get this done. So meet me over here. Let's talk about the cut you need to go buy.